So about 20 years ago, when I first came to this country, one of the first things that I learned was that my parents were actually getting divorced and living in separate apartments. I will never forget the first time that I went into my father's apartment. His dining room consisted of a bunch of chairs, but it seemed like he had invited friends over to a game of poker, and each of them had bought a chair of different color, size, and shape that didn't match the table at all. <laughs> the mismatch team continued to the rest of the apartment, especially the living room. In the living room, there was an imitation leather sofa next to a wooden bench that was next to a plastic lawn chair. <laughs> On the floor, a stained Persian rug that did nothing at all to bring the room together. <laughs> so me and my siblings started to question our, father, our father about the purchases that he had made in order to <laughs> furnish his apartment. And he said, there's no purchases. In this country, you don't have to buy anything. You will always find amazing things in the alleys. <laughs> and then he proceeded to, to tell us the story of every single thing that he had found. <laughs> now, my mother's apartment was a lot better furnished than my father's apartment. But it wasn't because she had spent a lot of money in the apartment. She had been lucky, in fact, because a friend of hers had moved back to Mexico and had left the apartment with all the furniture for my mother to use. The furniture was in an okay condition. The only thing that wasn't really working were the dining room chairs, because every time that you sat on them, you could feel the nails and the screws poking your ass. <laughs> so as I started going to school every day, I started to come back from school and watch in the alleys to see if I could find any of the amazing uh, items that my father had told me <laughs> that I was going to find. But I wasn't as lucky as he was. And weeks turned into months, and next thing I know, winter started. Now, I had never experienced the snow or the cold, and at first I was really excited, but then when it got really cold, I was like, oh, this is horrible. The worst thing was that I couldn't even go into the alleys anymore because of all the snow in the alleys. Christmas time was approaching, and I kept trying to go into the alleys to see if I could find something. And then one day, it snowed so badly that I decided, you know, I can't go in the alleys anymore because it's just too much snow, it's too cold. So I was walking on the main street, something that I usually didn't do, when suddenly I see a spot that had been clear of snow, <laughs> and there were four dining room chairs <laughs> laying around. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, these people are so nice. <laughs> they knew the alley is full of snow, and they cleared the space, and they threw the chairs on the floor for somebody to pick them up. So I went over to the spot, and I started to put the chairs together, one on top of the other one. But as you see, I'm kind of small, so I couldn't lift the chairs and my backpack at the same time. So I took my backpack out, and I hid it behind a tree. Then I took all the shirts, and I went home really excited about the shirts. I got home. I I took the shirt that we had, and, and I put it on the porch, and I arranged the nice shirts, and then I decided to go back for my book bag. So when I get to the spot to pick up my book bag, I see that there's four guys where the shirt used to be, and there's a car trying to park, but the four guys are like not letting the car park, and the people in the car are like <laughs> upset. I'm minding my own business because I'm like, I don't want to get involved. <laughs> when suddenly a police officer comes and asks me if I know what's going on. Now, I'm from a third world country, so we don't get involved in problems, and we don't talk to the police. <laughs> so I tell the police, uh, me no speak English. <laughs> but to my surprise, the police officer starts to talk to me in perfect Spanish. <laughs> and he starts to explain me that there's an argument going on because those guys claim that they reserved the spot with some chairs, and I, they believe that the guys from the car took the chairs away, and now they're fighting over the spot. I'm afraid because I'm thinking the police is going to take me to jail because I stole the shirt. <laughs> I don't know what to say when the guys start fighting and the police officer goes to separate them and I take off running. <laughs> I get home, but five minutes later, there's a knock at the door. I'm thinking this is the police. They're going to take me to jail. I look and it's my father. And he's looking at the shirts on the porch and he's looking at the new shirts and he asked me, what's going on with these shirts? I found them. I begin to say, 
but before I could tell him that they were stolen this from a Chicago parking spot, he said, I told you, you can always find nice spot in these nice things in this city. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>